All right, hey guys. So this is my uh, paint night video for the uh, Northern Lights or the Aurora Borealis. Um, so I'm just gonna show you what my finished picture looked like. So this was my finished painting of the Aurora. So of course I got the Aurora there, some stars in my sky and some trees down below. So I will go through this step by step with you and you can watch me paint this. Uh, there will be some times where I will be um, fast forwarding the video, but I will be giving you instruction um, when it's needed. So let's go ahead and hop into it and do some painting. Let's go. All right guys, so as always, let's go through what is going to be in your kit. Um, what's gonna be in your kit is one of these eight by 10 canvases. Um, and on the back, you can put your name and whatnot um, on the back, which I'm gonna do right now. And I can't seem to spell. I don't know why Northern Lights would start with an H. And then you can put your name. Okay. You're also going to have, oops, that got dirty. Um, one of these kits that has the pre-filled paints and the paint brushes inside them. Um, I had already opened one on another kit, so I'm actually just going to use the leftovers from another one. And then you're also going to get a picture for inspiration. Now, this picture is not the one that I had in my advertising. Um, I was going to use this one, and as you can tell, this did not print out very well. And no matter what I did, I could not get this picture to print. So, I'm going to be painting something similar to this, but I'm going to be giving you this as your inspiration. So as always with these paint videos, you don't have to do what I'm doing. This is just for inspiration or if you want to paint the real, the picture, uh, you can watch and follow along with me. But as always, art should be your own. Um, it should never be constrained to what somebody else wants you to do. So have fun with this. Um, before I start, I've got a little cup here. I've got um, water to clear off my paint brushes and you're probably going to want a paper towel. And so I'm just going to get started. Now with always with these photos, uh, especially these scenery pictures that I do, I do the backgrounds first. So what I'm gonna end up doing is the background, then I'm going to be putting in the actual lights. I'm going to splatter paint some um, stars in the background. And then to finish it off, I'm going to be putting um, some trees sort of similar to this in the foreground and that's all going to be in the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, I'm going to be painting my background sort of a dark bluish color instead of pure black. So I'm going to go ahead and get out my blue and I'll probably be using the black as well quite a lot. Now I've used this same paint set on a few different programs, so I might have to get some more, but you should have more than enough uh, to paint this picture on this eight by 10. And I can tell that my black is getting a little dry, so I'm just going to put a little water inside the, uh, the pot here, and uh, hopefully that will uh, kind of rehydrate some of this. Okay, so I'm going to be speeding up this video. Uh, when I have something important to tell you, I will go ahead and stop and um, tell you what I'm doing, and then I will end up speeding it back up and keep going from there. So I'm just gonna do the dark blue uh, and the dark black, uh, the background stuff. So like with the uh, trees, you know, if the whole background is black and uh, you put in the northern lines, you might not see the trees. So that's why I'm gonna be doing um, a dark and light blue kind of motif in the background.
So the reason I am putting this blue on the side, um, unless you put this in a frame, you know, it, it just makes the sides look a little bit cleaner to keep the same color and sort of wrap around so that you don't have that jagged white border. So a lot of artists actually do this um, with their canvases and they just go around the side um, just in case, you know, if anybody buys their artwork and they don't frame it, they just have a, you know, a, a bare canvas on a wall that you don't see the white. And that's just what I'm doing. Now you can tell that this is pretty streaky, so I'm going to be letting this dry a little bit and then I'm going to go over it again uh, with blue. And this time I'm going to mix black in with it because uh, I want it to be fairly dark. All right, I'm gonna start putting on my second coat. So what I did is I took the last of my dark blue and a little bit of the black and I just grabbed a little cup. Um, you can do this with paper plate, piece of butcher paper, wax paper, tin foil, saran wrap. Um, and I just mixed in just a tiny bit of the black with my leftover blue. I wanted this to be nice and dark. I've been putting a little bit of water in here uh, to sort of thin it out. I'm going to be going back over this blue because this is obviously a night sky and not a daytime sky. So we want this to be a fairly dark blue. So I'm gonna go ahead, speed up the video, and I'm just gonna go right back and forth across as much as I can with this paint. And I might have to get into some of my other paints. Um, like I said before, I've used this strip a few times with a different project, so I'm, I'm finally out of the blue. That was like three projects in. So there should be enough blue for this. So don't worry that I might grab some extra blue from my uh, for my supplies. So I have run out and um, like I said before, I have used this blue for a few different projects. You should have more than enough. So I'm going to raid my supplies, get a little bit more blue and uh, make some more. And the point of doing this over and over again is you don't want there to be streaks. So you can see that I'm still pretty streaky. So I'm going to go ahead and make a little bit more of this dark dark blue and I'm gonna go over it one more time so I'm just gonna let this dry just a little bit go over get some of the streaks out of here and then go over it one more time you can notice that I've been going back and forth across the entire thing and that is to sort of minish, minimize the look of all the brush strokes okay so I've got my last little batch of dark dark blue and I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to start at the top and I'm going to make sure my brush strokes go all the way across. Um, so you can see sort of here on this side where you can kind of see those little half brush strokes. That's what I'm trying to avoid. So I'm going to make sure that I go clear across the whole thing with my last coat of dark, dark blue. Now, if you have bigger paintbrushes at home and you want to use them, by all means, please use them. Uh, but this is uh, the brushes that come in the kits. And, uh, you know, we have to uh, make do with what we got. All right, so let's go ahead and get that on there. That is almost like a gray, but that's covering really well. So we're just gonna keep going over the whole thing one last time.
Okay, so it might look a little black, but this is a really dark blue since this obviously is a night sky. So we want this to not be completely black, but dark blue. Uh, so this has got to do some drawing. So I'm going to let this sit for a few minutes. This is a good time to do a potty break. Um, if you have leftover of the dark, dark blue that you mix with the black, um, cover it with some saran wrap or if you've got a lid, um, just in case you have to use this later on for any touch up. So I'm just gonna put one of my lids on it. I know I have it easier. I've got all these condiment, uh, condiment cups, but uh, yeah, cover it up so it doesn't dry out in case you need that again. Also, another thing that's important, always keep your brushes clean. Um, even if you're not using them for just a few minutes, uh, it just helps you to be able to use these brushes uh, for many projects. So I'm just going to clean this off really quick before I walk away. Okay. Also important, don't leave your brushes actually sitting in water. You never want to leave your brushes in a container upside down, even if you're rinsing them. Um, when you let them dry, you should always have them either flat or standing up, never down. It just ruins the bristles. Okay. All right, so yeah, I'm gonna let this dry. Then we're gonna get started with the uh, the Aurora. And then we'll do the stars. I'm kind of considering whether or not to do the stars first and then the Aurora. It might be the stars first. It might be easier. Okay, so I'm all nice and dry now. And um, it might still be a little tacky, but that's okay. And I'm going to do is put on the stars and I'm going to let this, the stars completely dry before I start putting in um, the Aurora. Um, the trees are going to be last. The way I like to do my pictures is to do background, middle ground, and then foreground. So let's just get out the white and we're gonna have a little fun with some splatter painting. I warn you that this can be messy because you are going to be literally splattering paint I have a few napkins that I'm going to lay down on my table. It just helps with my cleanup. So let's just put one here. Grab another one and just put it under on this side. Uh, I definitely recommend doing something like this because you might get an angry parent and we don't want to make parents angry. And so in order to do the splatter, um, you're going to want your white to be somewhat watered down. You don't want it to be too thick. Now this paint um, is really thick, uh, which is why we like this paint, because it does go quite a long way. Uh, and it covers really well. So I'm just going to grab my paintbrush. And I think I might actually mix some of my white on this paper. Yeah, this is a uh, really, really dry paint. Because uh, I've used this, you know, like I said before, quite a few times. So I just got it a little wet. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to be running my finger over the brush and I'm going to be splattering like that. I'll try and zoom in here so you can see what I'm doing. So can you see the little white spots? I'm gonna get some more water and some more white. Because I like to see stars in my night sky. Okay, now try not to do too much. You don't wanna overpower your painting. Now you see this spot right there it's a little blurry. Um, you can either, once this dries, to try to cover up with some of that blue and try again in that area. Uh, and what I might do is because I still got the Aurora, I might just put my Aurora right over that spot that got a little big. Okay. 
Okay, so I think I'm going to do one more pass. I don't want too many stars on this background, but just enough to be convincing that it's a night sky. <laughs> Okay, so that is as many stars as I'm going to do. But I'm going to zoom back out again so you can sort of see. So we got a couple, that one and maybe that one right there that got a little big. And I can always either use some of that blue that I made and go over that spot. Or I can just camouflage it with the Aurora, which I might do. And that sometimes is a really easy way to cover up mistakes that you made. So I got my stars in my sky. I want these stars to completely dry before I do my next step. My next step would be doing these auroras. Now this was that picture I told you that I first was going to give you, but I couldn't get it to print really well. So what we'll end up doing is we will make a streak and then with the paintbrush we will just be going up and making those streaks. So I don't want my stars to be wet at all uh, because it'll streak your stars. So I'm going to let this dry overnight and then we will be back the next day, tomorrow, and we will finish it up by putting in my Aurora and then finish it off with the, uh, the foreground of the silhouetted trees on the bottom. Okay, so this is nice and dry. I let it sit overnight and I'm just going to quickly do the Auroras um, and then I'm going to let them dry and then I'm going to put the trees on uh, tomorrow. And so in these photos that I had, this was originally really light blue, but it just did not print very well. And then of course these ones are green. So I have seen multicolor auroras, um, green, blue, I've even seen pink. It basically just depends on what gas in the atmosphere it's interacting with. But the most common is green and blue. So that's probably what I'm gonna do. I have my light blue here and I got some white and I also got some light green and so I think I'm going to be making a mixture of the colors. And I think I'm just going to grab a napkin I think and see what I like for uh, color combinations. Okay. So I'm kind of going a little bit towards this light blue, but I want, I think I want to lighten it up a lot more than that. Um, yeah, I think I want it to show up really well. So I think I'm going to be mixing that light blue with a little bit of white. Um, I just need to find something to mix it on. This looks promising. All right. So you don't need a lot of paint for this step. And I'm just going to grab a little bit of this white. Okay. All right. Now the cool part is if we don't like it, I made a whole bunch of that uh, background color and I can always go back over it if I don't like this color. I want to get this a little wet. Okay, so I am going to start about a third of the way up the board and go up this way. Uh, so I'm just going to start it right about here and let me take a look here okay now I'm going to be using just the edge and I want to do a line and that's what we're going to do now so just doing a line right over the board let's make this a little thicker
and then that's what we're going to do is something like this. Okay, and now in order to make this look like Aurora, what we are going to do is we're just going to take our flat brush and put it right here and go straight up. And that's why we still want this to be a little wet and it has dried off really fast. So I'm going to get some more color on here and get it wet and we're just going to pull it straight up. Okay, so there is my first Aurora. <laughs> Sorry, I got some folks that are laughing outside the door. So what you want to do is you want to go straight up. Okay. Okay. And there is my first little Aurora. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to speed up the film and I'm going to do probably four more. Um, and I kind of want them to be coming from the same central location. Um, when you see a real Aurora, they actually do tend to converge because what you're doing is you're looking at them going straight off into, far off into the horizon and they do look like they come from the same spot and then fan out. It's just um, from your perspective what it starts to look like when you're standing in one spot. Okay, so I'm going to draw another one. And I think what I'm going to do is take this one out this way. So I don't know if you've ever known this, but what the auroras are is it's the sun interacting with our atmosphere, the uh, radiation coming off the sun. And actually, there are a few other planets in our solar system that do have auroras as well, like Saturn and uh, Jupiter. Jupiter's auroras are gigantic. So I always thought it was really neat that Earth wasn't the only place that had auroras. And that just basically shows that our planet is protecting us. Or else the uh, radiation off the sun would, uh, would kill us. And the reason that it, you only see it up in the north and the south poles is that's where our electromagnetic field, or our magnetic field, sorry, is uh, at its weakest. So this actually ends up coming through and it interacts with the atmosphere. So now that this has dried a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and start putting in my trees. Um, and I'm going to do trees that are somewhat similar to this one. This was that picture that didn't print out very well. Uh, so you can see these. Um, so I'm going to do something similar and then I'm going to put solid black down in here. So I'm just going to get out my brush really quick. And I'm just going to put a streak of black here. 
and then I'm going to go in and start putting in some trees. So I'm going to speed up the video just a little bit. All right, so you can see this is still a little streaky, uh, so I'll probably, once I get the trees done, I'll probably just go ahead and do another little coat down on the bottom. Okay, so I'm just going to rinse this, and always remember, guys, keep your brushes clean. They will last you a lot longer. Let's get these cleaned up. So when I start doing the trees, I'm going to thin down the black just a little bit, because this is pretty thick paint. Alright, and I'm going to do the main trunk of the tree with my thin brush. I'm just going to get it wet, and I'm going to get some paint on it. And the sides of the pictures, I want my taller trees, and then I might do a couple smaller ones. Uh, just something to just sort of frame the, the, uh, the foreground of your picture. All right, so I'm going to make a tall tree right here, and I'm just going to take a branch, and I'm just going to bring it down. Or not a branch, um, a trunk of the tree. And these are going to be like evergreen, so they're really simple to do. Okay, so I'm actually going to rough up this brush a little bit. Uh, it's kind of sacrilegious, I know. And... What I'm trying to do is get someone that's really similar to like a fan brush. So you see what I did to this? I pulled the bristles apart uh, this way. Okay, so this is just basically my makeshift uh, fan brush. Alright, so I'm just going to grab some black paint here and put it on my paper. You can see what I'm doing here. I'm just putting some black paint here uh, on my paper. And I'm going to water it down a bit. Now if you have a paper plate, napkin, tin foil, saran wrap, uh, any of those will work. Uh, for what we're doing right now, but I am just making do with what I have. So I'm gonna I'm gonna zoom out just a little so you can kind of see what I'm doing with the brush. So I'm just le keeping it flat, um, and then I'm just gonna start loading it with the black, and then with the areas that have the the bristles sort of sticking out so you can see it right there so what you end up doing is you tap it um, big at the bottom and then you're going to make it smaller towards the top so this is what I'm going to be doing it's just going back and forth thicker at the bottom and then as you get up towards the top you'll pull it in closer and closer to the tree. Since the uh, branches towards the top of the tree are, uh, you know, closer to the trunk. So I'm going to zoom in so you can just sort of see what I'm doing to this tree.
Okay, so I'm just gonna flip this over so you can sort of see what I did. So there's my tree. Whoop, right there. So there's my first tree. So I'm gonna do the same thing with all of the other trunks. And so I'm gonna zoom out so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm just gonna speed up the video just a little bit. Okay, so I think that is enough for trees. And so I'm gonna go back on the bottom right now with um, a little bit more black so that it's not so streaky looking and then um, I will be all finished. So you can sort of see what I did to my brush here. Let me put the white paper, um, you can see it. Let's see, there, you can see how the bristles are like super crazy. So that was what I did to make a fan brush. So I'm just going to clean this guy up and I'm gonna use a different one that I've had here for finishing up the, uh, the bottom. So I am very sorry, my um, battery had run out on my camcorder uh, in the, right as I was finishing up. So um, after I did the trees, I went back um, on the bottom with some more black to uh, hide any brush strokes. I also did the black on the edges, sort of like what I did with the blue. And then of course I had put my signature at the bottom. So let me zoom out so you guys can see the full thing. So there is my picture of the Aurora. And uh, I had fun doing this, and I hope you did too. And happy painting, and always remember, you know, paint whatever you want to. This is only for inspiration. Okay, guys. Bye.